Welcome back, everybody. Um, what I'm going to do now is to look at converting a chart from an image. And usually that's convert a photograph to a cross-stitch chart. Quite often it's a piece of clip art. Um, but if we start with the launch screen, the place to go is convert image, where we got four buttons to allow us to do things in a variety of ways. The most common is the advanced image import. So I'll use that and convert a photograph of a face into a chart, and then I'll save it so that we can come back and look at exporting it later on. It can be quick and simple, but having said that, there are an awful lot of options that we can play with to improve matters. And what we get will vary according to how big we bring it in and how many colors we use and whether or not we use dithering you might have used the, heard the term confetti. That's that's dithering in a program like this. So I'm going to go to Advanced Image Import and have a look in a pictures file. <laughs> yeah, he'll do. <clears throat> so we have a face, and currently. It, it happens to be 259 pixels wide. That's unusual. And the reason why it's only 259 pixels wide is because I stole it from the internet about 10 minutes before the call started. So it's quite a small picture. But if you took one from your camera or from a scanner, it'll be much, much larger. Um, for example, uh, something which you consider to be a six inch wide photograph could easily have 2,400 dots to the inch, meaning that it's 12,000 pixels wide. Now, fairly obviously, if we took every single pixel and turned it into a full cross, we'd end up with an enormous chart. And we can't be doing that. If we have a need for a six inch piece of cloth, or an 18-inch piece of cloth, we're very restricted to the number of actual stitches that we can use to make a picture. Currently, I have this set to be 14 count. That's 14 crosses in every inch. And what that means is that if we have a chart which is 8 inches left to right, the maximum number of stitches that we're going to be able to fit into that space is 8 times 14. Which, if my maths are up to scratch, it's, it is 112 stitches, I think. At the top, we have an option to let us set the chart width. And currently, because this app is set up in metric, um, it's telling me that in with 259 stitches, I'll end up with a 47 centimeter chart. Far too big for me. So I'm going to drag that down to. Twenty centimeters, which is eight inches. And yeah, my maths weren't too bad. That's 110 stitches. Now, before I even do this, remember that 110 dots left to right. There's not a lot of detail to represent this face. We have a choice about how many colors it's allowed to use to make the face. Currently, it's set to 100. I could go as low as 10. I could go as high as 240. After you get about 60 to 70, you're not really adding much more detail to the chart. I'm going to take a stab at 60 and ask it to dither, which is to add a bit of confetti to blur the edges where two similar colors would have appeared. And I'm going to choose DMC threads to do it with. Now, if I click the preview button, this is more or less what it's going to come up with. You can see there's a lot fewer details. In fact, there's about half as many dots in here as there were in the original. If it was a real photograph, an actual one that came from a camera, there'd be millions less dots. As I move the mouse around, 
you can see which actual thread it's going to use for a particular area. I'm going to close that preview. Having previewed, it's had an opportunity to work out what colors it's going to use. And you can see in this list, it's going to give me a thread count, a stitch count, I should say, of the various threads that it's planning to use. One of them, it's only planning to use seven stitches of that DMC640. I don't think I'll bother. So if I untick it, it won't use that. And instead, it'll pick a different but similar color. I'll click OK. There's our chart. What does it look like stitched? Like that. One thing that I tend to do for faces uh, of either humans or dogs is to try and brighten the eyes a little bit. They can appear quite dull. But if you can find a light colour, not bright white, but a light colour within the, uh, the pattern, sometimes you can make them sparkle just by sticking a little dot to make it look like light is reflecting in the eyes. It's my little tip. I'm going to save the chart now for later. Now, just for comparison, I'm going to do the same chart, but this time with more stitches. So I'll keep the 60 colour limit. I'll leave it at 259 stitches wide instead of 110. And just hit the button. Now you can probably see that's a drastic improvement in the quality. But to do that, we've ended up with something that's 16, inch, 16 inches wide. Or you stitch it with smaller crosses. Because the one on the left was designed at 14 count. The one on the right is 14 count and is big. But if we decided, for example, to put it onto 18 count, we end up with something smaller. Some people go much smaller. And for example, at, uh, at 28 count, which is really tiny stitches, you could get it back to the 8 inch size again. So, one way of taking a chart that you find online, or scan, or get a PDF of, is to bring it into the chart, into the program using an onion skin technique. Now, an onion skin is a strange term, and I've often been asked why we call it onion skin. That comes from the Disney animators. I don't know if anyone has any experience of the old-time Disney uh, animation, but what they used to have were layers of very thin, see-through paper, um, which they described as onion skin because literally it was like very thin layers of onion that had dried. You could lie it on top, see through it, trace over it, move things ever so slightly, and then when you laid them one on top of each other, you could see how the animation was going to go. That's why we call it onion skin. So I'm going to try and recreate that chart in our program using an onion screen technique. So we're back to the launch screen again, and we got a kind of a wizard for this, the onion skin using a gridding tool. This only really works if the chart that you've got has a clearly defined grid. So. On the screen, it shows us the chart that I've just brought in and asks for the position of the top left corner. So I'm going to click very carefully there. 
Next thing it wants is the position of the 10 by 10 corner. So that would be here. A couple of clicks to try and make it as close as I can. And then finally it wants to know the bottom right, which would be there. Now, as you can see, my green grid doesn't match the black grid exactly. And I have the option to twiddle things a bit. One way to do it is to reset these positions. And another is to adjust the actual square widths and heights directly. So... That's pretty much it. 36 by 36 is the right size. So I'm going to click OK. Let's zoom in. Now, what we could do with here is some red colours and some green colours, and that's probably it. So I'll go to palette, add colours, add a thread, find a red, find a green, actually it's So now we've got a red and a green to play with. I'll click on red, click on full stitches, and basically draw over the top of the picture. Now the picture is behind the grid. It's not part of the chart. There are no stitches other than the ones that I just drew. And that brings us to the little onion button that I put on the toolbar. That lets us hide the onion skin and bring it back again. So that we can see how much of it we've achieved. Voila. If we want to, obviously, we can assign the same symbols to these colours as the original one. Assuming we've got them. So, for example, the red is using a heart. And the green is using a diamond. And that's how you do it.